Hey guys, welcome back to my garden. So earlier this year um, in spring, I set up my greenhouse that I bought at Lidl, this 50 euro greenhouse, and then a storm came through and just demolished the entire thing. It knocked it down, it ripped it into shreds, and then I realized these 50 euro throwaway greenhouses, they're not meant to last more than a year. The plastic is degrading outside and they're just pretty much trash. So I started looking online and that's when I realized that greenhouses are like crazy expensive. If you want a decent greenhouse, then you're looking at um, anywhere between probably 500 to, I mean, you can go upwards of 10,000 if you want to. And it depends on the materials that are used and how sturdy it is and how long you want it to last. Is it metal? Is it plexiglass? Is it, is it glass? But what it comes down to is that it's not really affordable at all. So I decided I could build my own. So I started out making a basic drawing. Um, I knew I wanted it to be about four meters long and two meters high, one meter 80 on the other side. But I'd never done anything like this before, so it was a super basic drawing. I would later find out I had quite a bit of issues uh, in my first drawing, but it's to be expected as I've never done anything like this before. So I just went ahead and started working on the beams. Um, the first couple of beams I did, I did with only hand tools, and it took an extremely long time to make each uh, mortise. So I went out and bought this manual drill press, which sped up uh, my mortise time by quite a bit, probably 400%. It went from about four hours to one hour. So uh, that was really nice. As you can see, this process took me a really long time. I'm not really sure if I'm doing this right. If there's a better method to do this with hand tools, please let me know. Uh, but I also don't have that many tools. I just have a few chisels. And here you can see I'm, I'm measuring the uh, entirety of the hole to try to get the equal depth all the way across. That way the tenon fits in it like a glove. And here's a set of unnecessary mortises that I made uh, that didn't end up being used at all, but uh, took a lot of time. And at the end, the mortises looked like this. Um, I couldn't find a way to make them any smoother at the bottom with hand tools, but eh, they worked out pretty good. Definitely don't have the ideal setup for this, but I have to use what I have, and I have two tables and some scrap wood laying around, so that's what I used. <laughs> Since the roof is angled, I had to cut off the ends of the other beams and then I went ahead and drew the um, mortises on those as well. Mm -hmm. 
this knot and that knot, this board is going to be shorter than this. Just going to go ahead and take a little extra. Don't know what the inside of the wood looks like yet. The stability of this table obviously isn't ideal for sawing, but I made it work through this process. And there's the other knot I want to avoid. So the reason I wanted to be sure to avoid those knots was because these are going to be my tenons and they were specifically exactly where my tenon would have been so they would have weakened the tenon a lot and probably snapped at some point and then obviously my building would be on the ground and that would not be ideal. One of the things I definitely learned from this project is to just uh, trust your lines. You made the measurements and just trust that they were accurate when you made them, or at least make sure you made them accurate. And then uh, you won't have any problems with the tenons and that the mortise is not fitting properly. That was one of my issues is I always made the mortises too small and the tenons, tenons too big because I was worried that uh, they would be slipping or something, but I should have just always trusted my original measurements. Now what I'm doing is making a little lip for the tenon so that not all the weight is on the tenon and, and it can kind of sit on that little sill there. Uh, it should just be sturdier this way. I've seen it done in a lot of uh, my research so I thought why not add it just a little bit of extra uh, security. So here we are at what looks like the next morning based on the beautiful golden light coming in. And uh, today is the day that I f start fitting all this stuff together. And of course, because the tenons were too big and the mortises too small, it took uh, quite a bit of extra work to make sure they fit. <laughs> After quite a bit of forcing and hammering, uh, I finally got them flush and looking good, and it's uh, time to work on the other side. Which of course also required a few millimeters to be shaved off every side. <laughs> Eventually I got everything a nice snug fit and then I had to deal with my next issue which was the legs for these that go into the ground. I could only buy 70 millimeter uh, by 70 millimeter but the only wood I had was 78 millimeter by 78 millimeter. So I had to take off 8 millimeters from uh, both sides to get them to fit properly.
After I shaved all the legs down, then I gave a coat of this uh, weather protection paint. It's just outdoor paint that I bought at our version of uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. So next up, I started working on the top plates, just the part that's going to connect or the beam that's going to connect each of the arches. And they're also going to have the rafters coming uh, perpendicularly uh, across them. So after I made four of those top plates, I moved on to the rafters, which uh, was quite a project because I think I needed nine of them. So it was, took me quite a while to make all of those. Oh, and sorry about the mess in the room. My bookshelf collapsed halfway through this project, so uh, that's my next project, doing something about the, the lack of tool space and the mess.
After I finished making all the beams, I called up my brother and he came out the next day to help me raise the greenhouse. We should have squared off the base first and figured out exactly where each post was going to be, but we didn't, and that's why you're seeing uh, me hammering the post down into the ground rather than the uh, metal stakes. It's because I already had hammered the stakes down once. And here you can see us measuring the distance for the second arch with that crossbeam. That was once again due to the fact that we didn't measure before we started putting things down. Like you do right now, you just got an unlevel shot. Yeah, life's rough for a poor chap like me. <laughs> you have like one of the more expensive ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. We all can't have nice. Shit. Why is that so far off? Oh, we'll make it work. Cutting time. That one? Okay, anyway, good. No, I think it was better how it just twisted. It looked twisted. Now? I can? just. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't have a limit? No. How'd they get around that? It's been around it, dude. Really? And here you can see me almost being killed by a flying arch. Oh, oh me out of game for good. <laughs> Not shaped anything else? That's why it needs to go back a little bit. Okay. I think back a little bit is where it was. How are you even looking? So the roof is the one place that I had to add screws um, and you basically always have to do this as far as I understand nails or screws of some sort to make sure that the rafters are tacked down and that they don't fly away with the wind. So this is just a precaution to make sure everything stays attached. Since this rafter wasn't really fitting properly, as you can see with me trying to smack the hell out of it, I had to bring it back and do a little bit of more work on it, but this was uh, pretty normal. I did this throughout the process with many pieces that I made. But after a few minor adjustments, that rafter went into place just fine. And then I went ahead and tacked all of the rafters down and then wor started working on getting everything painted and weatherproofed.
about this time is when a pretty big storm came through and I realized that the ends of my rafters were too long and that if I didn't shorten them and make some type of windbreak, the wind would get underneath of the corrugated plastic and most likely pull off my roof or at least pull off the plastic. So here I am uh, making them a little bit shorter and adding a wood uh, piece at the end to act as a windbreak and to also screw the plastic, corrugated plastic into. And here the maroon crew is uh, planning the door which was unplanned up until this point and so we had to kind of just uh, design it as we went making a basic door frame just from two pieces of wood. It's super simple. It's still 60. Frame. After finishing the doorway, we moved on to the roofing, and uh, so here I am just drilling a couple, uh, drilling some holes, some screw holes into the PVC before we put it on the roof. To drill these holes, I just used a normal uh, metal drill bit, and it worked really well. Uh, none of the PVC cracked, so I would definitely do this again and recommend it. After the roof, I moved on to the uh, outer shell, I guess you would call it, and I just went ahead and used this plastic wrap. I didn't film at all, but uh, it, this was four greenhouses, so it's a uh, thick plastic, and it turned out okay. Then last but not least, I started working on the door, and the door I mostly just had some leftover scrap wood, and then I bought a couple other pieces just to make it uh, wide enough, but I really didn't have everything I needed, and the bow marks to the Home Depot equivalent was uh, not open fully, so I even got some wood that I did not purchase, but they gave me anyway, such as this darker wood. I'm not even sure exactly what it is. Um, I think it might have been Douglas fir, but I don't know, it was much harder to work with. It was a much harder wood and, and not really intended for this purpose. But um, yeah, the other the other wood's just normal pine. Now for the supports to keep the door together, I was originally gonna do a Z frame, two horizontal boards across the top and bottom, and one long diagonal board across the middle. But I didn't have uh, any other wood except for scrap, so. I just started kind of screwing in as many boards as I could to make the door strong. So that's what you're seeing here. Just, uh, I wouldn't recommend this, but it's what I had, so I just used what I had left over. After I went to do a dry fit, it didn't fit, so I had to make the last board a little bit thinner. I used this hatchet to kind of just chop away at the board because I didn't really have anything else to do this with. Um, if you know of a tool that I could have used to do this with easier, that would be cool. But uh, at the time, I only had saws, hatchets, chisels, so that's what I used. <laughs> and it worked pretty well.
For my first time making a door and not looking at any tutorials or anything, I think it turned out pretty well. It opens, closes, fits in the slot, but then it started pouring as I tried to put on the doorknob. So here she is, the finished product. Not looking too shabby if I do say so myself, but this was all made a lot harder by coronavirus. Uh, Germany is in another, the, the hardest lockdown that it's ever been in currently. Hence why the window is not here because I cannot buy plywood. I've been trying for over a week and you know, I just cannot get it at the store. So this is what I've got so far. I feel like it's looking decent and um, I did all of this for about 300 euros so just to give you a little look into the cost of building something like this on your own this is it the um, I think it's pretty decent I wish that I had used something a little bit nicer for the sides but this was the cheapest thing I could use so I went with it I was originally going to use the same PVC roofing that I used um, for the roof on the sides as well but i wanted to keep the budget um under 300 and if i used that roofing it probably would have cost me 400 or 450. so this is what i've got everything's growing super well in here the sun is not out it's raining it's going to be raining all week so uh, i don't really get to use it to its full potential but just the other day the sun was out for two days straight it was like 90 out so it was really warm in here it was super nice it's super humid it's very uncomfortable to be in uh, it's like a sauna but i think the plants love it they all seem to be doing well we've got tomatoes paprika sweet potatoes peas um some berries we've got pretty much anything you could think of we've already got growing in here so and i will also keep you guys updated um if you're interested in how all this stuff does i'll probably I don't know, do an update post at the end of the summer or something like that. But, pretty happy with it all in all. I'm gonna be posting more videos now. I know I've said that before, but this time I'm serious. Uh, I'm gonna have a second show on the channel. It's gonna be Stacy's show, so stay tuned for that. So that's gonna be coming soon. So like I said, turn on the notification bell, like this video so it does better, more people see it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all very soon, but not too soon.